Hello there. Oh man, oh man, the penultimate episode of Better Call Saul. I cannot believe it. The the penultimate episode of the entire Breaking Bad universe. This is absolutely a surreal moment right here. I'm still deciding what to do with the finale. Do we do a live reaction together? Or maybe I will record the video, do an upload, but do it as a live premiere upload um, where you guys can watch the reaction and I'll be in the chat as you guys watch the reaction. That could be fantastic as well. But yeah, what's going on, guys? My name is Ellie Moses, a 23-year-old law and film shooting. Senior show, shooting your shot, baby. We are up to the penultimate episode of Better Call Saw Season 6 titled Waterworks and it is the penultimate episode of the entire Breaking Bad universe as I said but we could slot right back in and watch Breaking Bad after this and see it in an entirely different light which will be crazy but yeah it's been a hella productive morning got up at 4 a.m drove down to the beach uh did a 10k coastal run swam at the beach had breakfast came home did some groceries then now we are recording so yeah to say it's been a productive morning it has been. So yeah, let's get into the reaction. Let's have some fun with this thing. Let's smash it. Let's go. Oh man. Oh man, this is so fun. Hey yo 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 yo. What's with the audio? American Samoa, let's go. Wait. Does that mean he went back again and did it? Because when he first got it, he obviously would have got it under the name of Jimmy McGill um, during Chuck times. But did he go back and reinstate himself as Saul Goodman, obviously, from with the University of American Samoa? Yeah? Do you have any idea what time it is? Watch the pot never <laughs> boils, Francesca. Hour. We've got a lobby full of people out here, and at 8 o'clock, I am done. I don't care if the building burns down. I'm going home. <laughs> wow. You and your work ethic. Did I ever tell you how indispensable you are? No? How much longer? Leave Francesca so, alone, man. She put know, up with I a lot. I can't say. So pass along my sincerest apologies and tell them I'm swamped. Everyone can hear you bouncing that thing. <laughs> That's the sound of thinking. You should try it sometime. I love the comments on episode 9 and I think I made some comments in 10 and 11 that obviously because I'd pre-recorded those episodes and I haven't seen the reactions to episode 9 in the comments yet. Um, I'd just like to say I like how a lot of people said that maybe Saul was truly depressed. Like he was depressed obviously from making up with Kim but the coping mechanism for that was him embracing the character of Saul Goodman, was him taking on as many clients as he did, was him having the flashy mansion, the prostitutes, the, the cars, um, and the artworks and everything, the flashy suits. And if your life is constantly like that, if your life is constantly um, on go and nonstop repeat like that, um, that, that's the coping mechanism for obviously trying to forget what happened throughout the entire series we saw because with um what we're seeing i guess with his work ethic obviously in breaking bad a lot of the times he was um a comedic relief character but now um we see like a little bit of the backstory how many clients he's taking on um obviously we got to see a glimpse of his mansion so if your life's constantly like that the first thing in the morning he was on the bluetooth speaker already um yeah it's kind of like it, there's very little time to reflect and dwell upon what happened in the past Oh no, the pillow! <laughs> I'm surprised they got that in one take. Because the camera has been slowly dollying in. Like slowly. Slowly from behind. I'm guessing that was wired up or something and they managed to pull it down on cue.
Damn. These yeah. are those little moments of reflection. <laughs> Send her in. See? Then Kim in? Then Kim in? Oh, you got the Mary Jane Watson haircut. How's it coming? Good. Did you get the mayonnaise? Well, here's the thing. They didn't have Dukes. Is that Todd's brother? Really like Dukes. I'm joking, but they like... didn't have it. Which is a bummer. So I don't know. You think this will work? I mean, technically it isn't actually mayonnaise, but Yeah. Technically I don't think this is mayonnaise. But close, right? Yeah. Let's give it a shot. No half measures. Even with cooking. Oh Doesn't gosh. have to be meth. I don't know. It's as close as I could get. Sissy. Garnet and gold. I see it plain as day. Plus, they're really beautiful, sissy. Oh, the red ones could maybe pass for garnet, but the gold ones are just regular yellow. Well, the minute I saw them, I said FSU. Besides, gold food coloring. <laughs> June, did you ever even hear of that? No, it sounds expensive. This is a scene straight <gasps> out of WandaVision right here. Get flipper hands from all the chemicals oh. they put. Well, this is as close as I could get anyway. <laughs> I was trying to notice in this scene right here whether Kim is still wearing her pizza earrings. I know they're daggers, but I call them pizza earrings. Um, and I think she's not wearing them anymore. I know her hair was covering over her ear because usually she has it tied up. Um, but I think she's not wearing them anymore. And I think that character of Kimberly Wexler or like anything to do with her past, she does not want to remember. Oh, this is awesome. Everything looks amazing. Oh, I forgot. Let me tell you about Poxy. Poxy. They're gonna get a wine cooler down here. Yeah, yeah. Yo, has Rhea Sehorn been training that was fun. in between? Yeah, that was fun. She's bulked up a bit, man. She put on some decent size. She got mad calves, damn. Well, maybe she's had that all along and I haven't noticed, but seems like she's put on some good size. Yep. 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 That's it right there. Good job, guys. Peter the Great yep. buried inside me. Yep. What really, brother? Really? Boy, you gotta be in shape to be on this show. You sure do. Lots of running. Yeah. You think they ever ran with the bulls on this show? Like in Spain? Not that we've seen, I don't think. Maybe it's too dangerous. Yeah, it does. Notice her voice has changed as well. Oh, hey, they opened a new outback down in Satellite Beach. You want to go Friday? Sure. It's a date. <laughs> we don't have the jewel mirrors this time. <laughs> It's a shame. What could have been? What could have been with Kim? This was a weapon of mass destruction in the legal world. That was never put to use properly. Because she was a savage! <laughs>
Can you tell me the flange down? Why do the pipes right there, or whatever they are, resemble her earrings? Each. Like the daggers. Great. And does that come in a three inch riser or just the two inch? Great. ABS or PVC? <laughs> That's cute, June. I'll pick up the cake after lunch. Do you remember what kind of ice cream Tammy likes? Uh, jeez, Yeah, no. so maybe, what do you think? Vanilla or strawberry? Ooh. Um. <laughs> Ooh. Well, I mean, because, I mean, think about it. It's got to fit in the truck, right? So how's it going to fit in the truck if... Well, yeah, but nobody makes a truck that long, so... Safe to say store and try to buy a pacifier, don't you think you'd call the police? Yeah. I sure would. Absolutely. What you eating? Tuna salad. I made it with Miracle Whip instead of mayonnaise. Hmm. I use almond butter instead of peanut. You can tell she hating her life at the moment, but she has to suck it up. She just falling a lot in at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you have these like usual like just like you know I don't know it's just like the, the the editing in this episode so far um with the Kim scenes have has been very inten intentional in my opinion to display this sort of like mundane nine to five routine lifestyle she has um trying to put on like i don't know if like ha like these fake reactions to those individuals or to things she doesn't find um necessarily um attractive or fun um and i just find it very intriguing to see what they're gonna do with kim this episode now that we're seeing her um you know take on this sort of like normal lifestyle you know we see the legal environment um or from what i've seen of the legal world um it has this you know nine to five normal days you're stuck in an office just looking at a screen or dealing with paperwork it's obviously probably longer it's longer than nine to five it's not your usual um average hours um but i felt like with kim's uh area of law she was in um she always had you know different unique cases um challenges with different individuals and obviously she got to pull a lot of strings and it was probably constantly exciting um to have um the and have have these challenges and face these challenges on a day-to-day -day basis whereas this is basically copy paste copy paste copy paste i feel sympathy still i don't care it was her fault a freaking exercise bike yeah i can't believe you got that for my birthday like all the office gossip going on palm coast sprinkler watering your world since 1978 please hold kimberly Kim, there's a Victor St. Clair for you on line three. Kim? Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, so what do you think about that? That's pretty rude. What brand is it? I don't care who made it. I don't care if it's Megatron 3000 or worth $4 million. I'm gonna ride it straight back to the store and guess what he's gonna get for his next birthday? Some hair regrowth serum. <laughs> I'm gonna laugh at it. Yeah. I won't pick up the phone to Victor. Kim Wexler. Hey, Kim. You know who this is? I'm gonna take that as a yes. <laughs> it's Victor St. Clair. He's just looking to buy uh, some pipes. Receptionist, is she the type to listen in? No. Good. Okay. So, how's Florida been treating you? I'm catching you between hurricanes, I hope. Kim, you there? What do you want? No wedding ring as well? I don't want anything. Obviously. But. I just... It's been a while. You know, just... It's been a while, and uh, might be nice to catch up. 
catch up? Yeah, my mind was wandering this morning. I was just oh, now we're seeing the conversation. Okay, just random thoughts, and bam! It suddenly occurred to me: it's been six years. I mean, Jesus, I I couldn't believe it. I thought you might want to know I'm still alive. Yep, I'm still out here. Still getting away with it. Feds couldn't find their own ass with both hands in a proctologist. You shouldn't be calling me. Oh, hey, you're awake. <laughs> you shouldn't be calling. Why not? What am I, tying up the line for important irrigation business? Come on, Kim, say something. <laughs> you can call me an asshole. Yell at me. Just let me know you still got a pulse. Just say something. You want me to say something? You should turn yourself in. The what? You heard me. I don't know what kind of life you've been living, but it can't be much. Set the pot to the kettle? What? That is, that is really rich. You, you preaching to me? See, you have no idea what I did or didn't do, okay? And, and why don't you turn yourself in? Seeing as how you're the one with the guilty conscience, huh? <laughs> what, what is stopping you? Brings in the ground. Mike's in the ground. Lalo's in the ground, apparently. You don't have to hold back apparently. on my account. They can only hang me once. So, so go ahead. Spill your guts. Put on your hair shirt. See what it gets you. Why? Are, Kim, why are we even talking about this? We're both too smart to throw our lives away for no reason. Just, I just... I only wanted to... Kim. 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 I'm glad you're alive. Yeah. Time to sing. Okay. I love right there how um, we didn't need to cut to Saul um, in terms of what he was saying. We've already seen that play out in the phone booth. Um, but they used a similar technique with the camera panning in to the start of the episode. Um, you know, that slow controlled zoom that goes from like sort of like a medium shot and then you get a close up shot of her face. But she, it was all done in one take because we're seeing the conversation, what was said play out. But we already picture in our minds what was happening in the phone booth because we've seen it before. Um, we saw it just without the audio. Now we're just listening to the audio. So it's like clever, clever, really like it's a real clever way of using another scene um, and having the audience picture of what Saul's reaction is going to be because we've already seen it before and obviously having the other side play out. Um, and Rhea Seahorn's acting there was absolutely fantastic. Like just the emotional change in her facial expressions was really, really great. And I'm just, you know, I'm trying to really nail on what she's feeling at the moment. Obviously that guilty conscience, Eminem, Dr. Dre style, um, right there. It seems like she's trying to change for the better and completely forget about the past and dig it away along with Lalo, Mike, like bury it with them. Um, but it seems like, I don't know if she's, that addiction sort of came back at the end right there. Um, that she like, don't tempt me again in a sort of way, or I don't know. Like she had to fight herself right there to tell herself, no, no, sorry. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. This receptionist, the type, Happy like. Birthday, dear it's still better than Skylar's happy birthday. It's a sad sight seeing Kim like this. Because like I said, I know what she was capable of. <laughs> they don't. But damn. Oh, Alaska? Was she going to bump into Jesse or something?
Ah, I'll be kicking. My bad, my bad. <laughs> Love how the episode's titled Waterworks and Kim works at a, you know, pipe company. Oh, where's Michael? Oh, no, we got tap and go now, baby. <laughs> we got the visa. <laughs> we don't need cash transactions anymore. <laughs> Is she going to have lunch at the DP again? You know, just to feel like... Oh, I thought she was going to sit there and just be like, you know... Reminisce on past times and just get that feeling again. Oh, she. Yo, Cheryl. She even changed her hair. Damn! Kim? Hi, Cheryl. I'm out front. Yo, she gotta change hairdresses. I'm sorry. Please give some closure to Howard. I know it's been six years, but please. For the love of Howard. Ah, oh, guilty conscience. Yes. You know what? Fair play, Kim. Fair play. But it's too late. I don't care. It's been six years. was murdered. Why? He was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Search again? They'll search. I don't think they'll find him. <sighs> Cheryl, he... It... It all happened in an instant, and he didn't... He didn't suffer. I know he didn't suffer because of the headshot, but in terms of like the, the mental suffering you guys he put didn't him through. Suffer. Thank you. Thank you. Keep going. Keep going. Now unleash. The lies you two made up. The picture you painted. That's all he is now. That's all anybody remembers. I want to change that. What happens now? Will you be tried? Against Jimmy. Imagine she comes up with this affidavit. <laughs> Dang. You're a lawyer, right? You're a, a great one, Howard said. How could you not know? Bernalillo County has my affidavit. It's up to the district attorney whether to prosecute. And she may not. Why wouldn't she, though? Why? Because it's been six years? There's no oh, okay, yeah. physical evidence. There's got to be something. No remaining witnesses other than my ex-husband. Assuming he's still alive. I could 
sue you in civil court. I could take everything you've got. Yeah. Why are you doing this? I mean, if that if it does go to court, right? That means Skylar, Marie, Walter Jr., they'd be involved and they'd be surely they'd uh like be witnesses because it was all one big cluster of later on but like witnesses in terms of like verifying gus and his operations and the previous dealings with the salamancas yeah right i know it happened like skylar and like the the whites were after in breaking bad but still like at least something that can verify um gus's stuff and the dea as well um with what happened to hank and gomi um, I'm just trying to think what proof is there. Lalo went all the way to Germany to find proof. There's got to be some sort of proof. I'm just thinking in my head at the moment. I'm trying to come up on the fly. Like, what physical evidence is there? Because Mike's gone. You know what? I'm glad that Kim is finally getting this guilt off her chest. Uh, it's clearly been weighing her down for the entire six years. And like, even this episode, you see just the way she's conducting her day-to-day -day stuff. It doesn't seem to have, it doesn't have the bite and energy and agency of the Kim Wexler we're so used to in this show. And what these past two episodes have done, or like the, these three episodes, um, 10, 11, and 12 have done so well. It's almost made the whole events of Better Call Saul, the whole events of Breaking Bad, sort of like a blip in the past. It's crazy. It almost feels like Howard's death, Lalo's death was a lifetime ago, even though it was only a couple episodes ago. I think that just goes to show how fantastic, how well crafted this show is and the techniques it uses to make it seem like an eternity has passed. Like these events, like you hear the words, you know, Lalo, Gus and Mike being buried in the ground from Saul earlier in the episode. And you're just like, wow, remember them? Like, even though it was only like two episodes ago, we were just seeing them. It feels like an eternity has passed. It feels like it was two, three seasons ago rather than just like two episodes ago. It's absolutely fantastic. And obviously I think the black and white um, helps with that um, time transition as well. But I just think it's the, the mood the show is setting at the moment, um, the way the conversations are being um, said, the positions characters are placed in. And I think um, the use of uh, fantastic distant camera angles as well, um, even before when you had the receptionist, you had like a medium close up shot or a medium shot of the receptionist talking. Um, but then it would hold there. It rack focus in on Kim's office um, with her in the distance rather than cutting to her office straight away. Um, it was her repeatedly, you know, or rapidly trying to bring the blinds down. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of distant camera shots so far here. And it's absolutely fantastic. Um, I'm just interested to see where this episode goes now. It seems like we're getting the Kim episode because last episode left on Saul or Jean trying to break into the guy's house, the one with the cancer, the cancer patient. You know, like, what's done is done. Nothing, like, nothing, there's nothing Kim can do to undo what her and Jimmy did, but, like... It, it was terrible. It was evil. She was evil as well. But I cannot help but feel sorry for her here. Oh, that hand reaching out. Damn. Ha <laughs> ha 
<laughs> you know what you noticed this episode about Kim as well? Um, she's not assertive, not as assert assertive as she has been um, in previous seasons. You know, uh, her boyfriend, I guess, made the decision about the mayonnaise. It's just a simple, yep, whatever you want. Even with like the um, flavor of the cake, um, you know, in previous seasons, she'd double down and make her own decisions and be a bit more authoritative. Authoritative, sorry. And in this episode, or like what we've seen earlier on, she's just lost that. I also don't think there's been one bit of score this episode yet, or like unnatural sound. I don't, besides from the opening credits. Oh, seven three seven. <laughs> Neat breaking bad callback right there. <laughs> the amount Walt needed and seven three seven down over Albuquerque. <laughs> I mean, that's straight villain arc right there. Annihilating, not annihilating, but like... Doing your dirty work in the individual's house, then taking a cigar... And whiskey from that very same individual and having a little celebratory event upstairs. The arrogance on Gene is... Man. And you're a bag man. The I said it last episode. He's in that I don't give a F care factor mode at the moment. And just going hell for leather. <laughs> not, not rust these ashes. Leave Rusty's ashes alone. Nothing to see here. Is that a police officer? Yeah. So lucky.
this bullshit. Look. Look, what would you call this? I'm calling I don't know what. Would you call that a fish taco? Because anybody <laughs> call this a fish taco. I mean legally. Legally. <laughs> Look at this. And there's one piece of goddamn pollock no bigger than the end of my thumb. Now, how can you even call that? I'm like, am I supposed to do something about it? What do you want me to do about it? <laughs> well, I want you to look inside there and tell me what you see. Why do you persist in ordering fish when we're 1,400 miles away from the nearest ocean? Because it's on the menu, all right? Because I live in the 21st goddamn century, all right? Mm. And this, this is some bullshit. I'm telling you, I got half a mind of going back over there and smack somebody in their face with it. I think Jeff took one for the team right there. <laughs> These guys are just like, they're not even like, what the fuck just happened? They're just like, oh man, like really? We were just enjoying our food. That would have woken up the whole neighborhood. Now he's got to defend Jeff, potentially. The thing is, it's not like <laughs> it's not like he lost control of the vehicle. He took off like that. I like how this episode we had the sort of like opposing side of the conversation from the phone box scene and then here right here we're seeing the continuation of kim entering um jimmy's office to sign the disillusion papers and he couldn't give a crap and obviously francesca can't put up with him anymore because he's giving her some emotional turmoil i love how he tries like to act busy right there and like he couldn't care like Kim just signed the papers. He's just there like a busy man. <laughs> Let's get her over and done with. What do you think? Pretty great, right? Yeah, it's um. Yep. I just need your printed name and signature. So, Florida, 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 Florida. Hey. I gotta tell you, I think you're gonna regret not taking your share of the sandpiper money. And that by a shitload of swampland. I will, um, file these tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Have a nice life, Kim. Just like that? Anything else I can do for you? <laughs> hey, sweet cheeks, who do we got next? Let's make some money. Emilio Koyama. Where's your paperwork? <laughs> I don't do no paperwork. He doesn't do paperwork. Who cares? Come on, come on. Are we going to reveal character right there? Jesse! That's Jesse! Yo, that's mad! That was a fantastic reveal right there. Anyone can recognize them. Can I bump one of those? 
That is insane. That is so good. Thanks. Mm. What's up with this shit? <laughs> Rainy. Nah, no, it's, it's crazy. It's like bananas all this rain. <laughs> bananas, man. I thought we were like in a desert, you know? You're a lawyer, right? Ah, I recognize you. You defended my buddy Cabo. Chris Ortega. Oh. Juvie Court. Soul Baby Jesus. R.I.P. Combo. Like baby, just a, you know, one of those sayings outside of the <laughs> church. <laughs> Nativity scene. Yeah. Knights of Columbus. I mean, what the hell did he even want that thing for? <laughs> huh? I mean, I Bloody combo. Dumbass. I told him he could go to hell for stealing something like that of me, but he. <laughs> to me, no. But you. You got him off like scot free. That, that was pretty slick, yo. <laughs> Tell him I, I hope he's keeping his nose clean. I never thought I'd. I'd want this like i needed this interaction but now that it's here like it's amazing <laughs> like it's like the only bit of color like no pun intended this episode has like this episode has been depressing and moody as hell and i feel like it's gotten really fantastic performances from everyone but in particular Rhea seahorn who i feel like he's delivered probably maybe her best performance of the series in this episode um, but, oh man, I never thought I'd, uh, I never thought I'd see this. Like, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh. Hey, so you having all this expertise and all, this guy, Goodman, see the real deal? Like, lawyer-wise? Why do you ask? I got a buddy in there who's facing some serious time. I mean, not... You know, not baby Jesus time, but, <laughs> but serious. You know, he needs top shelf legal representation. And I tell him that, right? But, you know, he sees his dude's commercials on TV and this is where he wants to go. I mean, I tell, yo, Emilio, you know, a funny TV commercial is not a sound basis for like, you know. I mean, like, would you go to a doctor? Oh, uh, Emilio, like he's in there right now. On you and like a, on like your spleen or whatever. He dies in Breaking oh, Bad, doesn't he, Emilio? Funny yeah. TV commercial? No. I mean, come on. How is this any different? You is know? he the one that dies in the RV, I believe? Anyways. This guy. Any good? When I knew him, he was. When I... He was. When I knew him, he was. She doesn't know him anymore. That's it. When I knew Jimmy McGill, that was Saul Goodman right there. Like, I love the polar opposites this episode in terms of, I feel like the, the whole episode, like the beginning of the episode, we see that Kimberly Wexler, even though she's Kimberly Wexler, has being buried the character the lawyer of kimberly wexler was buried and she's trying to rekindle that story and obviously um um you know um uh, relieve herself of some of her guilt um and in this episode as well we've seen the character of jimmy mcgill or like the character of jimmy mcgill um after episode nine was completely buried and embraced in saul goodman but then obviously we have the level up here in gene um yeah it's just very interesting to see how both of them had to bury um parts of themselves due to their actions is that the same bus kim was on or like is that like a i don't know oh my bad my bad that was no no he just had to catch the bus home <laughs> He 
He just waiting for that phone to ring. <laughs> Dad. What time is it? Are you okay? Yeah, uh, no, not really. Um, I, uh, Dad, I got arrested. Oh, no. What for, Jeffy? It's like this crazy mistake, you know? I mean, I had an accident, okay? A, a little fender bender type deal, no, no big thing. My foot maybe slipped on the accelerator, or maybe it was a uh, defective. I don't know. But that's not the big deal part. The big deal part is they think that I, me, committed a robbery. Why would they think that? I know, right? The place where I had the accident, this guy, this drunk guy, he comes wandering out of his house and flags down the cops, the, the police, and says, Hey, you know, I got robbed. And sure enough, the police, they find evidence of, like, breaking and entering, and, oh. and, and stuff is missing, which I did not do. Yeah, like that. Well, the police are obviously barking up the wrong tree. Yeah, no shit wrong tree. Wrong like forest. Exactly. Because you would never do something like that, would you, son? No, no, no way, man. Absolutely not. Uh, when the police took you into custody, did they find any of this so-called stolen merchandise? Was it in your possession? No. Of course it wasn't. Because you didn't steal anything. Therefore, since there's no evidence whatsoever that you committed any crime, I'd say you got nothing to worry about. So what happens next? Breathe deep and sit tight. I'll have you out by lunchtime. You're coming down here yourself? <sighs> no, I think it'll be your mom. Marion. <laughs> talk to her for me? I sure will. Straighten it all out, no problem. Oh, oh God, that boy. He's gonna put me in my grave. Marion, oh, it's a mistake is all. Getting picked up for something you didn't do, that could happen to anybody. Yeah, right, anyone. This isn't the first time, you know. He's been in trouble before, oh, Jesus. Marion. The death of me. He's gonna be the death of me. Marion? Marion? It's gonna be all right. We'll get him out of there lickety split. I've been through this before. There's nothing lickety split about This gene carried a different. Back when he was living in Albuquerque. Drunk in public, resisting arrest, urinating in some place he shouldn't have, and me on the telephone for hours, long distance, trying to find him one of those bailout places. I maxed out my Discover card, and I'm still paying for that one. Well, money's not going to be a problem because I'm going to help you with that. No, Gene, I can't let you do that. No. Sure you can. Jeff will pay me back. And you don't have to worry about a bondsman either because guess what? In Omaha, they don't have them, right? You just walk into the station, you pay a straight cash bail. It's not like Albuquerque at all. Why do you he mentioned Albuquerque? Did he slip up? Marion, you still there? Yeah, what? Why did Jeff call you instead of me? Well, I think he was scared at how you'd take it. Honestly, I was gonna pay the bail myself, but I think it should be a family member. I think that'd be best. I'll tell you what. I'm gonna take a shower, get dressed, and you do the same. I'll swing by and pick you up. We'll get this whole thing squared away. What about Buddy? Is he in any trouble? Because <laughs> she I saw them through so. the window. <laughs> Why would he be? <laughs> I'll see you in about an hour. Yeah, okay, yeah, thanks. Detective Marion on her way. I'm not the kind of girl who gives up. Marion! Did he slip up by saying Albuquerque Just and like Marion went and did some research a little bit on the internet? 
Marion? Marion? She's not watching cat videos. You're probably watching his commercials. Marian. Oh. Hey. Hi. Oh, hey. Everything okay? Yeah, I can hear oh, it. Yeah. I'm sorry. I can yeah. hear the saw Just commercial. Lost track of the time. That's okay. Uh, want to put some clothes on so that we can get moving? What do you say? Uh, you know what? I, I, I don't want to slow things down. I think maybe you ought to go without me. Oh, no. Yeah, it was. Hi, I'm Saul Goodman. Did you know that you have rights? The Constitution says you do, and so do I. I love how the commercial's in color. With the, in the reflection of the glasses. And that's why I fight for you, Albuquerque. What's that? You tell me. Marion, do you think that's me? Because it's not. There never was a nippy, was there? <laughs> what did Jeff tell you? Oh, he didn't tell me anything. Ask Jeeves told me. I typed in con man in Albuquerque. And up you popped big as day. What are you doing, Marion? What do you think I'm doing? I'm calling the police. Here, let me help you with that. Oh, I thought he was going to strangle her for a sec. Excited the bigger picture here, okay? Jeff is in trouble, and I want to help him. He and I sure could use your support here. What'd you get my son into? Nothing that he didn't ask for. Now, listen, I'm still the good friend you thought I was. Okay, Jeff understands me. Buddy understands me. And you will, too. I just you have to, uh, you know, keep things on an even keel. All right? What have you got there? Put that down. Put that down, Marion. Put it down. Do not do it, Marion. Final warning. I trusted you. Okay, there's a criminal standing in my kitchen threatening me. He's a wanted man, and his name is Saul Goodman. All right, Marion, I'm calling the police. I'm calling right now. I love... I, I almost thought right there they were about to vilify... Like, Gene's already a villain, but I thought they were completely going to go balls to the wall, Um, you know... Gene becoming Walter White levels of villain and um, him about to... Oh, next episode started. I don't want to watch it yet. <laughs> him about to kill Marion right there. But you just see that little bit of humanity creep in at the end there. Like, just through the cracks, um, it seeps in. Um, just as he sees her holding the little button right there. Or he he holds the little button. You see it. Um, you see him begin to hold back and just think to himself, what the heck am I doing? Um... And I think this episode brings out or brought out the best from Bob Odenkirk and Rhea Seahorn. I think they were absolutely fantastic in this episode. Um, the range displayed. I feel like the switch up this episode was absolutely fantastic. Um, and Gene almost becoming, now I'm saying Gene, 
Remember, I was struggling to switch from Saul to Jimmy, and then I switched to Jimmy, and then now it was hard to switch from <laughs> Jimmy to Saul, and then now it's Gene. <laughs> but um, I almost uh, thought they were going to take, like, Gene um, to another T right there um, in terms of, like, creating another character that would take another person's life um, with his hands. Obviously, you can say the domino effect of the Breaking Bad universe, that he was responsible for Chuck's death, Howard's death, like arguments can be made for and against. But the character writing in this show, I've said it time and time again, it's so complex. It's so like multi-layered. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, yeah, and like I said, the range displayed from both Bob Odenkirk and Rhea Seahorn this episode is phenomenal. Um, and the, like I said, the switch up was absolutely um, phenomenal. Um, from both their characters and we head into the finale now um with potentially maybe kim and jimmy um being taken down together um and that, that would be actually pretty ironic <laughs> you know um they thought they got away and then they both end up in jail together even though they had separated like that'd be that'd be actually hilarious not hilarious but like that would be actually crazy, you know. You would see this episode, them signing uh, the divorce papers or the solution papers. Um, and it'd be actually ironic if what brings them back together um, is the crime they did together. Um, and obviously, Jimmy thought he'd got away with it. But Kim in the background has been do doing, um, obviously, uh, um, submitting her affidavit. Um, and that's going to get the police to begin searching again um, and maybe open up the investigation again, especially after six years, because what happened feels larger than life, the whole Breaking Bad universe. Um, and I said at the beginning, this, it all feels like a, a small distant memory, um, what happened and like all these big players we had in the game, like, like Nacho slipping the freaking pills into Hector's jacket almost feels like a lifetime ago now. Um, and it's like, now the focus is on obviously it's like it's like the focus is like on down to the final two players um obviously kim wasn't a part of it in breaking bad but now we know she had a part to play um even though she wasn't present but like we're down to the final two individuals that's the person that is proof and evidence francesca francesca's still alive and she can testify sorry i completely forgot uh, that was the person that can probably testify and attest to everything that was happening, um, is Francesca. She was well aware. Um, and yeah, but like it's, we're down to the final two players now. Um, Jesse's had his happy ending. Um, and from what we know, he's gotten away with it. My guy, Jesse, shout out to my guy, Jesse. Um, but these are the final two that need to be taken down. And yes, I did feel sorry for Kim this episode. She had a lot of guilt to bear. Um, and I don't feel like you can ever, um, especially after what she's done and how evil of a person she was, um, I don't think you can ever rid yourself of that guilt. You're going to have to carry that guilt for the rest of your life. But in terms of trying to, you know, correct those things and become a better person and admit your faults and mistakes, I respect that. And I felt sorry for her this episode. And I think that's a testament as well to Rhea Sihon's fantastic acting this episode. She was absolutely phenomenal. But yeah, I'm hella excited for the Better Call Saul season finale um for season six and the, the finale in general for the entire series um and i, I just want to keep talking and talking about this show because it's absolutely fantastic um and i say it multiple times in my reactions i've learned so much from this show from a filmmaking standpoint it's absolutely insane um how well it ties in just story beats with one another um and its visual storytelling is an absolute masterpiece in my opinion i think it is the best i've seen in television um its visual storytelling is phenomenal um and the editing is absolutely phenomenal as well how much thought and effort is put into each shot the lengths they go through to get these long extended takes um and even though it takes a lot of planning and effort once you um film that scene and once you get the perfect take of those long extended takes it's ever so rewarding um because there's no need to you know stress yourself out in the editing bay i guess but yeah the, oh, i can talk about this show forever i can talk about this episode forever um so i've missed out on a lot of things um but it dealt with a lot this episode and yeah, in terms of seeing that sort of like new T to Gene's character, to Jimmy's character. Um, we almost saw that right there. Um, and 
he himself became sort of like this unpredictable character this episode gene himself like we've seen we always talk about you know lalo and other individuals and other characters in the show being unpredictable you know what are they going to do next gene sort of became that character this episode and it's absolutely insane so yeah hope you guys enjoyed the reaction as always been your boy take care god bless and peace